Hi, my name is Tim Sasurchi. I'm product manager of AS Interface at Pepperell and Fuchs. And today I want to talk to you about AS Interface Handheld Programmer. It's a very simple network, and the only configuration required is the address. So, uh, for example, a safety or an analog module will be address 1 to 31, or an extended addressing module will be 1 to 31 A or B. The only thing you want to make sure is if you have a full address, for example, address 2, that now address 2A and 2B is no longer available. So let's talk a little bit about the kit. The new handheld programmer, version 3.0, now comes in a kit. And what's included is, of course, the handheld. We now have the charging cable in there. Make sure that you do a full eight hour charge before you use the handheld. It will only run on the battery. It will not run on the cable. And then it also includes four cables. The idea was that we provided one device that will be able to provide programming for all units, either Pepperell and Fuchs or even the competition. So no problem, we can program everything with this kit. We got a standard addressing cable with the addressing jack. We have the cable with M12 on both ends. We have a cable with just flying leads that we can put on AS interface terminals. And then we have our G10 program, basically a piece of flat cable attached to an M12. I want to show you how to use each one of these cables. The primary function of the handheld programmer is addressing, but I'm also going to show you a few more things that you can do with it. So now I want to demonstrate the use of the programming cable with the addressing jack. I'm going to attach the M12 connector to the top of the handheld, and then I'm going to stick it in the top of the G12 module. These modules have the built-in addressing jack, and in this case it's actually an eight input module. We got four inputs for the top, four inputs for the bottom, and there's a jack for each. So I want to make the first one address 1A, and then bottom one address 2A. Hit the program key to set the address. Move the jack over. The new handheld program, it's no longer required that you hit the address key to read the current address. You can just arrow up to the next. Hit program. Much simpler, much quicker. Okay, the next one I want to show you is the M12 extension cable that's included. This is the same M12 male that you'll put directly in the top of the handheld. It just pushes on, there's no threads. And then you can attach it to any module that has the M12 on it. This is an e-stop. This has got full address, so it needs to be 1 through 31. So I'm going to, again, make this 3. You can see that I'm going to just arrow up to 3A. It's going to automatically know that it's a full address module and change it to address 3 and not 3A. Okay, made it three. Very simple. The next one is a module which has no addressing jack and has no M12 connector. It just has terminals. So I'm going to use the cable with the flying leads. Brown is ASI plus, blue is ASI minus. Now attach this again to the handheld. I'm just going to arrow up to address 4. Because it has an extended addressing, it will actually make it 4A. Okay, next, ten, next one is the G10 module. This I'm going to use this little adapter. I want to put this in the yellow tray, which is on the top. Okay like this. You just press it down tight. Put the cable in. Arrow up to address 5 and hit program. You're done. The next one are the push button modules or our G4 modules. 
You can attach these directly to the top or sometimes the bases have an addressing jack. You can also use our dressing jack cable. This is also pretty easy if you haven't already mounted it. Place it on the top, arrow up to six, hit program. See? What you'll notice also as you program the addresses, at the bottom there's a little uh, address list. It'll actually show you addresses 1 to 31, 1 to 31A, and 1 to 31B. So it shows you all the addresses that you programmed previously. This is the idea that if you keep track of the nodes that you've programmed, then you won't accidentally make a duplicate one. But keep in mind, it will not prevent you from, let's say, programming the same address twice, just in case you're doing two machines simultaneously. If you want to clear this list to start over, just press and hold bo both buttons down simultaneously. Now you're all cleared up. Also, another little trick. If you want to set this back to factory default, which is address zero, remember factory default means if you take a failed one off a running network, you put a new one on, it'll automatically address. So address zero is something you want. If you want to put it back in stock, do a short push of both the program and address keys. Okay, now it's address zero. So it's a quick and easy way to set it to address zero without scrolling with the arrow keys. Okay. With the 3.0 handheld, we also made some changes to the programming of the safe output module. This has an addressing jack too. The old handheld just didn't keep the power on long enough to properly program it. So with the new one, we just keep it on a little bit longer. And in this case, you can see I've already pre-labeled it. I want 9A for the standard address and then 8 for the safe one. So I'll do that. I'm going to arrow down to number 9. And number 9A will basically be in the run mode. And then you flip the dip switch to program mode. I'm going to go back to 8 do that program. Okay, so it's very easily, the old handheld, you had to hit the address key a bunch of times to read the address and hit the program key a bunch of times to write it. It was a little frustrating sometimes. Okay, the next thing I want to show you are the other modes. The address mode, which is the default mode of operation, is what it comes up with when you first power it on. Power on is the address key. Okay, so hit the address key to read the address which is connected. It'll then tell you that it's address zero, because I just, just reset this one. Let's make this address one, so I can do it. Certain modes of operation require that the address not be zero. For example, if you want to read inputs and set outputs, make sure it's some address between one and 31. Okay. The next four modes of operation, you can get to by pressing the mode key. ID code, these are the OSI profile, ID, ID1, ID2, and IO. So this kind of makes it unique compared to all the other modules that are on the network. Now we can get to the peripheral fault. For example, if there's a short on an input or a short on an output, when you get to this mode of operation, it won't be zero. You'll actually see a one in there, which tells you it's a peripheral fault. Parameters. Typically, this is not a used mode, but you can simulate what the master would do when it powers up. Remember, the parameters are volatile, which means you take this off, it will automatically go back to default. But it, it does allow you to simulate a parameter change and then read the inputs and set the outputs. And then the data mode. This is really the other mode that I want to talk about. This allows you to read the inputs and set the outputs. This can be a really nice diagnostic tool for valves, I.O. model, anything that you want to uh, diagnose, let's say, remotely on site rather than go back at the ASI master. So what I'm going to do, hit the address key. Address key is going to read the inputs. Right now it's at zero. If I press the green button, hit the address key, it'll show you an eight. Basically, one hex digit shows you the value of all four inputs. We have a maintenance and troubleshooting guide, which has a page in there, which will relate that one hex digit to all four inputs and all four outputs on the network. So this can be a very e easy guide. And you can see the number four is 
the third input. Okay, the outputs are actually one and two. So what I can do is arrow up to address or to number one. The program will set the outputs. Okay. If I want to, let's say, turn that one off, but then turn on the green one, change the number. Or if you just want to turn all the outputs on, just go to the maximum value. In this case, it's 7, or in your case, it might be F if it's a 4 in, 4 out. And go ahead and press the program key. You can turn everything on. What you can also do is read inputs and set outputs simultaneously. It's going to remember that you wanted that programmed. When you hit the address key, it'll actually, and you, if you push it for a long time, it'll actually keep them on. And now if I press both buttons, it'll tell you the value of both inputs being run simultaneously. This is a quick and easy way to set outputs and read inputs and uh, a really nice diagnostic tool. All right, thanks for watching this video about ASI Handheld Programmers. For more information, see our YouTube channel.